U.S. President Joe Biden has been in Berlin speaking to European leaders on issues of Gaza and Ukraine. The outgoing president faces a tricky task. Close advisers say he can only speak for himself and not for any potential successor with U.S. elections around the corner. This Friday, he's been meeting Germany's Olaf Scholz. He's going to be meeting Emmanuel Macron, as well as British Prime Minister Keir Starmer, also aiming to potentially reassure leaders on U.S. policy and support should Donald Trump ascend to power. Well, talking to us uh, more about that meeting is Mariana Griffini, Assistant Professor at Northeastern University, London. Uh, Mariana, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, the West, uh, they've been talking amongst themselves, Joe Biden and Olaf Scholz already. They're saying that they must maintain their resolve for Kyiv. What does that look like? Thank you very much for the invitation and good afternoon. Uh, yeah, so Ukraine, as well as migration, took the center stage, also in the latest EU Council yesterday. Um, Ukraine, the section on Ukraine was really the pivot of the EU Council conclusions. And uh, there seems to be commitment still across the EU member states and also um, across the transatlantic partnership to uh, the protection of Ukraine. So, um, however, now Meloni still, for instance, Giorgia Meloni in Italy still reiterates the importance of protecting Ukraine from Russian aggression, so not giving up the fight for Ukrainian independence. But there are some talks about uh, still sending arms to Ukraine. So Biden's visit to Germany also happens just after the EU Council that was um, yesterday. So th there will be interesting conversations around Ukraine, about the Middle East, and also uh, about migration more generally. Well, you, you've talked about migration there. Germany's uh, parliament uh, on uh, Friday ba have backed uh, tougher rules for asylum seekers. Uh, what kind of position do you think that uh, Olaf Scholz will find himself in uh, following uh, this parliamentary ruling? Uh, definitely. So Germany has seen the surge in support for the AfD, so Alternative for Deutschland. That's a far-right party. Um, the surge happened at the latest EU parliamentary elections, but also was confirmed during the state elections in Germany, for instance, in uh, Thuringia. Uh, having said this, the far-right uh, AfD is really pushing other parties uh, in order to implement and enforce tougher uh, immigration policy. Uh, Germany has already closed borders, so it has suspended Schengen, the Schengen Agreement, as much as many other countries now at this moment in the EU, and uh, um, is calling for tougher immigration policies that may actually come out of the new EU pact for migration and asylum. Yet this was discussed yesterday, and even if it has been approved in 2024, it will be implemented by 2026, and already it has come under criticism because states, some member states like Germany, want immediate tough measures on migration. And migration, very much a gambit for Donald Trump in the run-up to the United States elections. Uh, Joe Biden is now obviously meeting with the European leaders. This is his last European tour before he uh, vacates the position. Uh, is there a worry amongst leaders in terms of uh, coming to an agreement with Donald Trump uh, as a potential successor? Uh, so, w when you talk about leaders, yeah, we, we need to differentiate because within the EU, we've seen really a landslide in terms of far-right support. So, for instance, in Italy now, we have a um, far-right leader, Giorgia Meloni, uh, as well as, for instance, in the Netherlands, Geir Wilders from the far-right is supporting uh, the government, and uh, there are many other examples. So, these leaders uh, have expressed their, uh, their sympathies towards Donald Trump. There have also been some links, for instance, between Giorgia Meloni and her brothers of Italy and Steve Bannon, right, uh, very much connected to Trump. So, uh, the far-right leaders are rooting for Trump, and at the same time, uh, 
the relationship between Trump and EU leaders is still to be seen if Trump wants uh, the presidency, because Trump is actually pushing for more isolationism, right? Withdrawing from NATO, withdrawing from these deep transatlantic cooperations. So that there is some, uh, you know, there's a puzzle in there. There's a dilemma. Uh, a dilemma for everyone uh, to uh, look with a keen anticipation as those elections do approach. Uh, thank you so much uh, for just providing your insight there, uh, Mariana Griffini.